Okay, so we're gonna have this really great conversation. I'm excited. One of our iconic womanhood mastermind alumni, and one of the things that she birthed in the mastermind was her ministry, her coaching practice slash ministry called Wives That Thrive. We're gonna be talking about how to turn a difficult marriage around. So, and she's going to share her own story because she has her own story. She actually was on the verge of divorce herself, right? And now, and I've had the privilege of meeting her husband and, and her husband has helped, I see him helping her with her things and he's, you know, he's doing husbanding things. And so she has turned, she turned it around and she has done the work She's done the work on herself. She continues to do the work. She's still in my mastermind and now is supporting other women in building up their marriages from difficult marriages in crisis to marriages that thrive. And so if you were on the last live, you know that I was just talking frankly about there are times when you're just going to have to walk away, right? The biggest thing for me is if the other party is not willing at all not willing or able to grow, then you just have to, you may have to go, right? So you have to be, you have to know when it's time. So, hello, beautiful. <laughs> hey, queen. <laughs> Everyone, welcome Mrs. Nikki Longe, the founder of Wives That Thrive, wife coach, relationship coach, Minister, uh, you, anyway, my dear <laughs> queen, queen, <laughs> all right. So I'm just gonna let you go ahead and introduce yourself and then let's get right into the topic, how to turn a difficult marriage into a flourishing one. So Nikki, welcome to Iconic Women Who Conversations. Let's chat. Thank you. First and foremost, thank you, queen. It's always an honor to be here. Um, I, to just sit and chat and you know have those conversations they're gems they always I, I always leave with a notebook like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> um and thank you for this opportunity hey queens i am so blessed to be here and uh you know as she said my name is nikki luce and uh, i've been married going 26 years this year um <laughs> and you know it's just it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Um, it was out of my pain, out of my, um, when I was going through a dark time in my marriage, that it first of all started with here for wives, and then recently changed to wives that thrive. And it was out of that pain that I created that because I didn't actually have a safe space where I could go and just talk about what I was going yeah. through without feeling judged, without feeling as if you know, you, you just talked about it in this last hour. Divorce was this this big thing on your forehead. What? You, you know, so you, so t before you even talked about divorce, you couldn't even talk about the fact that you were having issues. That's right. Okay? That, that was not a discussion. Like, what do you mean you're having issues? I bet go and fix it, Jerry. Go, you know, that was always the, you know, you know. Don't you know how to pray? Aren't you a praying woman? Yeah. Aren't you a praying woman? I bet go and pray, Jerry. What, what's, what is happening that is new? You know, it was always, you know, so I was hurting and I didn't, I, there was nowhere to go. And that's how Wise, here for Wise Life, Wise That uh, Wise That Thrive became my baby, became my ministry, because I wanted a place where other women could come to, be celebrated, be encouraged, be loved, be prayed with and prayed for while they were going through, right? And, um, you know, my story is, is, is not unique necessarily um i got married yeah okay did the same thing a lot of us did you know grew up right first of uh first of three children it was already laid out you 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 finna <laughs> you finna go to school right. you finna get a graduate get a good job and you finna marry and have children that that was yes and that's that, the prescription that was it um i remember very clean and i've mentioned this before but it was one of the things that propelled me even into marriage and carried me all the way through to getting married when i turned 21 you know as joyous as i was my dad goes that's great 
That's awesome. But your mother was married with a child at 21. Now, now, all I heard, that's not what he was saying, but what I heard was, you ain't that's nothing. That's right. Till you married and have a child. That's, that's, that's what I heard. No matter what, what you do, no matter how many degrees, your value isn't, you're not validated until you're married. Yeah. That, and that can, imagine at 21, that carried me all, all the way. That's, that's all I could think about. So when I say I got married to actually make my dad proud, that's the basis of it. I, you know, like, okay, that's the only way that I feel that my dad would be proud of me is when I get married and have a child. Yeah. All right. It took a while for me to get married. Um, so I can't say that I was one of those women that did, didn't necessarily know herself. I did know what, myself what to age, a degree. What age did you get married? 34. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 34 was it 30 33 or 34 one of those 30s um but it so i so i knew enough of myself when i met my husband it was a long drawn out this is how we met but we met and um you know it was it was good we we actually you know we we courted for a long time so i knew him right i knew him i i was you know we fell in love loved Everything about him, he loved everything about me, at least at, you know, th during those times. And it was great. I mean, on my wedding day, you could have told me that the, the guests had nowhere to sit. There was no food. The place, and I would have just been like, oh, that's okay. I mean, that's, I mean, I was, it was a great day. I was, I, I was so glad that I was getting married to the man that I loved. Beautiful. And then... We got married. Still, no big deal. Um, I, you know, everything was as it needed to be. And then the children came. So, so um, my husband started traveling, working out of town. So he would go out of town Monday through Friday or Thursday evening, and then get back in on Friday. Yeah. And I had just had my daughter at the time. Okay. So. He would come home to say, hey, uh, he came home to rest. <laughs> home girl is like, oh, no, you're coming home to, <laughs> to take over. What do you mean you came home to rest? <laughs> so he, you know, and he didn't understand. Like, I I've been working over, I mean, so have I, honey. I mean, what? So, so these are where things started to creep in. That's right. Little, little resentments. Little resentments. Mm -hmm. Little resentment. Um, you know, I need, I need this help with this. Well, you, I'm tired. You, what do you mean you're tired? Uh, you know, little things like that. Before I knew what was going on, I was doing things like stonewalling. Mm, now, like, can you, let's talk about what stonewalling is for those who don't know mm -hmm. the term. Stonewalling, at least my term, is... <laughs> Just silent treatment. I would call it not being present, really. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, answering, only talking when, when, I, when I, I felt the need to talk. Only responding when I felt the need to respond. Um, I mean, borderline disrespectful, almost, if you really think about it. Almost, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, she, this, I forgot. This was the courageous conversation. Oh, it was disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> it was disrespect. Yeah. Uh, silent treatment. Um, silent treatment. Um, Eggshelling. You know, being cautious about what I said when I said it, when he was around, what I did, what I didn't do. Uh, withdrawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, just um, choosing what to tell him. Mm -hmm. If he, wants, if he wants to know about them, then he's just going to have to mm -hmm. come ask me. Mm -hmm. right? Some passive stuff. Yeah. yeah. How about, yes. can we, are we going to get really real? Like, yes, get not, real. Get real. Been you, but then a lot of women do this where they shut it down in the bedroom. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. I'm coming with a big bonnet. Don't. Uh, do, do, do. Because my excuse was, well, if he's not making me feel the way I'm supposed to feel, then how, does, uh, how am I supposed to give up? give out in the bedroom, right? But it's so, real. So we're drawing. Yeah. But, but it, it, it's real, but is it right? 
again, we'll Ooh. talk about that. Ooh. But <laughs> Let me guess you know, so, so so not <laughs> not giving up in the world, in, in the bedroom, right? Um, neglecting, not doing the things I'm supposed to do. I one one thing that stood out to me during those times when when I was growing up in my you know a lot of us don't have anything to weigh our marriages against except for our parents. That's, yeah. that's that's it there's no manual there's nothing you know i mean if you're gonna watch tv you girl please <laughs> right so our parents are they, they they were it and there was one thing that stood out to me with my parents whenever they quarreled the way i knew that they quarreled if i didn't hear it was my mom would always cook and she would place his food on the table and my dad wouldn't eat and this could go on for days. Nigerian style. Now you starve. Mm, mm. Days, right? And then finally he would start eating again. I'm like, oh, okay, so they finished Made their work. <laughs> but that registered in my brain as in, oh, never, ever. Like, I'm, I ain't finna cook for nobody and he don't eat the food. My, so I, I would stop. You know that would be my okay. I'm not. I'm, you're gonna go go find your own own food. Again, again that's what I did. But was it right? Mm. Mm. See, so there were many, and w- and when I'm telling women that work on yourself, sometimes it sounds harsh. Yeah. Sometimes it sounds like ah, but he has problems. I promise you. He does. Yep. He does. Yep. But you can't control what he's going to do or say or how he's going to act. 100%. The only thing you can control is you. Let's stop there. Yeah. You see, I agree. With all of these things. Go ahead. I was going to say, because I really, I, and I think this is a worthwhile point to come to just underline, right? Because it's such a hard word when you're unhappy especially when he's doing things and you can point at him and he's this and he's this and i wanted to underline that too because and, and co-sign it because especially for me you know saying i know what i my reasons right even then nikki i 100 percent agree you have mm-hmm. to start with you let me tell you why because even if it ends in divorce you're still better off if you do the work on yourself yeah. right you can either a inspire him to change which has happened or b inspire him to go cuz sometimes they get so annoyed at your growth or c become, become so clear that this is not where you belong yeah. either so, way you're better off so you do have to start with you 100% i just wanted to understand that you have to start. thank you for saying that because that my, you know my, my flourish course that's the whole point of it it's to to get out of our emotions and to now be able to really say okay this is who i am this is what i've grown into and this is where i need to be but to be able to do it from a place of sanity clarity and so that when you do leave if you choose to leave you leave in peace like you said and not in pieces and if you stay, you stay you're with, staying with a plan. Yes, you stay with the plan. And you <laughs> stay in peace. And you stay in peace as well. Yes, so that's the whole goal. Stay. That's the whole point. Yes. Lots of people stay in pieces. And that's and wrong. That, 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 that's completely counter to what God is asking us to do, even though he says he hates divorce. He's not saying, I hate divorce, but stay there and die. I'm not saying, he's not saying, I hate divorce, but stay there and be, you know, um, be each other's doormat. That's not what he's saying. I hate it. So fix it and figure it out. Do something. But don't just sit there and act like it's not happening. When you know that it is, you're suffering, he's suffering, the children are suffering. Mm. And at the end of the day, God is not getting any glory. So you're Mr. and Mrs. So what? Come Come on. So what? What is the purpose of both of you being together when all you're doing is hurting each other? Yeah. So what? Mm-hmm. And you so and you're trying to tell me you're going to get glory you, when, when that day comes, you you're going to stand before God and say, "Well, but we stayed." 
And he's going to say, stand to do what? What, what? Have you seen? Have you seen the condition of your children? You yes. stayed, and what happened? Yes. Because then I was even saying to someone, and I talked about this, that in that case, you're not staying for. It's not. You're not giving any honor to God. You've turned marriage into an idol. Idol. Absolutely. So stay to say, oh, I've been married. 37 years. No one knows that behind closed doors, or maybe people even do know, that out of those 37 years, 35 of those years, you could not stand his guts. Which not, which is not normal, too. No, I remember, the I just... difference between, I think, being irritated with somebody and mm -hmm. not loving or even hating the person. Yeah. Definitely not hate. Because but you just can't stand him. See, you know, and you're like, so this is very real. Mm -hmm. You can be in a marriage and be the person's enemy. Mm. And you, that, that is wrong. That right, right there is, is, is actually sin. And, not, and, you see, and, and it does something to you. Mm. It can happen when you don't know how to heal. Kistar, Chistar Maris has a really great question. And I want to mm. love that you question. Take this question, and as you share more about how you came from that place of being on the edge and how you turned it around, because her question is, and and I think this is a very powerful question, and, and I know why she's asking it too, because you hear so much in social media, right, that you can't heal where you're being hurt. I know what I want to say to that, but I want to hear from you around can you heal let me scroll up and read it the way she said it can we heal in a place where we were hurt so come on wife coach <laughs> <laughs> i say yes we can i say yes we can because that that's part of my story right um life was happening again the withdrawing the the, the disrespect the lack of communication um the, the you know even even to the point where i started labeling him you know like yeah i know, I know exactly how what he's going to do you just just judgmental you know all of that was what started to happen and we were we were roommates the only thing we shared was the address that we lived at that was it when he walked up the stairs this way i went the other i mean that was it um oh my poor children they 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 you know they could feel the tension they could feel the tension and saw that you know and and i had to apologize to my daughter for for letting her see and think that that was okay mm. Mm. you know because it's not, not okay and my son as well like you know if you don't it's not okay to to just feel like well i'm just gonna shut I, you know i don't care I, it's never okay to do that come to a place where you can talk figure out what you need to do and do whatever it is you need to do um but one of the nights one night we we've gone on with this for years i am not i'm not talking about this was happening two months three months this was years and the other day when i heard michelle obama say yeah I've been married to that man for 30 years and 10 years of it, I didn't like him at all. <laughs> it just made me go. You could relate. You're like, mm -hmm. right real talk right there. <laughs> and real talk. Like, I don't like this man. What did I, how? How did I get, how did I marry this man? Remember I just talked about how, how happy I was on my wedding day? And I'm lying, you know, lying beside him before we even got to the point of just being roommates and he's sleeping in the guest room and I look at him in the morning, you know, wake up and, and, and just, just everything. Just irritation. Yeah. Irritation. When you first got married, right? When you first, you know, afraid, you, said, oh. you look at him with eyes of love. Was like, oh. And even the snoring sounds oh, just. It was, uh, then okay, then, don't stop nothing. will be nothing. The snoring. The bridge, uh, when you cross the bridge, you, you want to take the pillow the and just. He breathes. <laughs> even the way he breathes, look at him just breathing. Ugh. Why does he have to breathe? <laughs> because you're so angry. But let me ask you this. I want to ask you this. Because I, what I love about this, this sort of, is that you were able to look back with eyes of self-awareness. Because when you're in it, you often don't realize your part. 
you're only consumed with his part yeah. right right but you can even tell the way you're even telling the story because you haven't really mentioned anything he's done at all and i really wanted to highlight this because people that because often when you're having this part of the conversation and you tell me as a wife coach sometimes when you meet people depending on where they are in, the, in their journey the wounding is so fresh that even the conversation like this is annoying yes. because it's like well what about him you're not talking about what he did the reason i think knowing nikki as i do but but a woman who has done her work is because it's not even just about him right now no. we're talking about you and and by taking the responsibility of looking at yourself you're taking back your power absolutely so absolutely because it was a choice that i made yes i, Ooh, I made the choice right it wasn't forced on me i chose to you know what we we this that something has to give here i have to do something um you know prior to there was always the okay well let's go to marriage counseling and you know our men for those of you that are africans on the line no you go and fix yourself okay. you fix yourself <laughs> 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 If you will behave right, this, there, will, there will be no problem. I don't know what you're talking about. You go and fix yourself. And it's going to me to no end. Like, what do you mean there's two of us here? How is it? I, I'm not crazy. Why is But eventually, this day we were, you know, having our intense, intense discussion again, just arguing. And, and, and what's funny is it's not that prior to this I hadn't thought about divorce. I had. I've had I had those full on discussions in my head. <laughs> Shoot, wait, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Once I take my you know take my money, I'll do this. I'll make sure I have. I mean, I had it all planned out in my head. Everything, how the children will just one day he'll just come home. There won't be anyone home. I so I tried. Yeah. So 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 thinking about divorce in my head wasn't new. Yeah. But for us to be having a, a, a quarrel, a discussion, an argument, and for him to just look at me and go, I'm only, I need you to know that I'm only staying in this marriage because of the children. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It did a number. Because, because all of a sudden the children are mentioned, and I'm thinking, yes, the children. Oh my goodness. What are we doing to the children right now? Are we really staying in this because of that? Or are we selfishly in this just for our own selfish reasons? What are we really doing here? That is when the question is started. And, and, and I had to make a decision and I had to get some clarity. Ooh, can, I, can I just ask Absolutely. something here? Mm. Something you just said now that I think is such an important... You said... When he said, I'm only here because of the children, and that kind of woke you up to an awareness that we're being selfish, right? And this is what I've said many times. I wrote something earlier today, and I said, pain can be your teacher, but it must never be your master. Mm. Because mm. pain can make you very selfish. If you meet people who are in a lot of pain, they often become extremely self-centered because the pain draws them into themselves and all they can think about is their pain. Mm. So because they're in so much pain, that's all they're thinking about. Like, and so sometimes you meet women, I'm sure in your practice as a coach, you meet women who are in so much pain and they are making selfish decisions. Yes. Because pain can make you, when pain masters you, you become super selfish. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was at that point at some, at, at, in, in that whole process. I, I could see nothing but the pain he is and he is and he is and why can't he be like, and I mean, I, I name it, I said it all. If he would only, you know, and, and, and how come he, he can't be this way and, and wh why would he speak to me this way and how come he doesn't realize that if I'm doing this then he should be doing, I, I mean, all of it. All of it. I was there. I was immersed. You couldn't tell me nothing. I, I, you know, like he was just this brute of a man. Just this brute of a man that just did not deserve me as his wife. 
<laughs> and you know what? He was gonna he was gonna get judged for it, and and God was gonna deal with him. Yes. That that was that was I was there. I'm going to report him to my father. Yes. Tell my God about him, yes. and God will spite him. Spite him. Yes. <laughs> and God is like, nah, no, 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 that's my son too. That's my son too. That's what God is saying. Yes. Who did God turn around and like? Uh huh. Really? Okay. Sure. Because what after that night, you know how when there's a fire, the fire they tell you or you're burning or something, they tell you to stop, drop, and then roll. Exact same thing as what I had to stop. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did we get here? How, you know, and I'm asking me, I'm not asking him this. How did we, what happened? How did we get from a day that was just in years of such bliss to wait, what happened? And I started, I had to go on my knees and I had to seek my, my father. Mm. I had to seek my father. It, and it, this was not a seeking like the rest of the seeking. Father, please deal with him. Father, judge him. Father, you know, no, this was, Father, show me. Yeah. What am I not doing? What am I doing wrong? How is my thinking warped in this whole situation? What do I need to do? Is there even a way to do anything? That's right. That's that prayer. That's the prayer, right? Yeah. That's the prayer. Is there? Pray that prayer. Yes, that's the prayer. Yes. And he begins to work on you. Mm. He began. Oh, my gosh. When I say... It was during that time that I recognized what I had been doing. The stonewalling, the disrespect, the pulling back, the, you know, the, um, being, being what are they? just being unloving, you know, being very surfacey on the surface. Yeah. You know, but in, in me just irritated as all get out and just ugh, to a, a uh, another human being that God created? Ooh, come on, come on. You better come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to another human being. That was when I got the real that I got the true meaning of what God has joined together. Let no man put us under that. That no man is me. It's not, it's nobody on the outside. It's me. That no man was me. I was the no man. Mm. And I got like, ooh, let me not be the one that has a hand in destroying this. If it needs to go its way, let me at least know that I did what I knew to That's do. That's right. You've done it all. And then you have did it all. And leave with peace. Like, you know what? And then I can leave with peace. I put it all And any time it comes up, I won't feel, ugh. That's right. You know, like, that's how it is. That's that's where that's how it is. God is all but the beauty was, thank goodness, because I started to do that work. My first thing was, who am I? Mm -hmm. Whose am I? Mm -hmm. Why? Why am I? And what am I? Oh, you better come up, come on, framework. <laughs> <laughs> who, who? Who? Who am I? God? What? Who am I? What? You know, and then whose? Lord, am I yours for real? I mean, and then love the what? What am I? And then why am I? What is my purpose? What, what, do, you, what do you need me to do here? That was, that was my first real, real talk. Like, oh my That's goodness. The work. That That's the beginning it. of the work, the self -medicine. That was it. That's that. It that was work. it. That's it. I have to, I just have to say, I'm, I'm super proud of you right now. I feel like a proud, like, oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm so proud of you. Go ahead. It was not I'm, easy. I'm going to myself. No, it, no, no it, 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 I mean, I'm excited, but it was not an easy walk. Because when God was start to show you, you, ooh, ooh, child, you're like, how did this man live with me again? Yeah. So can I just, so this is a great, I love this because when God starts to show you, you, it's also important not to fall into condemnation. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and then just get into that place of, oh my God, because the enemy will use that opportunity to say, look at you, you're just a mess. The enemies are accuser. Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit is not going to accuse you. The Holy Spirit is going to convict. From my place reaction of immediately when he showed me who I was, was compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I had this deep compassion mm -hmm. for my husband. Like, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. Because God started to show me things. I, I started to hear, I started, you know, started to walk the walk. I'm like, hmm. And that's when I started questioning. Okay, so, so he did this. Yes. But then you stopped cooking. That's right. That it, that's how you felt. Yes. But is that right? Started to, you know, yeah. Two wrongs don't make a right. You're right, Lord. Okay. All right. And, you know. And what does that make you? Like you turn into somebody altered too. Thank you. That was my next thing. Because what God told me was, that's not who you are. Right. That's not what you, what you, you've grown to be. So why now are you letting someone call you out of your name? Right. Why are you walking? I just had this discussion with um, a young gentleman yesterday at work. He came in, he's like, I beg no vexu. I, I, I just, I'm like, okay, what, what is this? Mommy is here to talk to mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking about, you know, his relationship with his girlfriend and all that going on. And, you know, so we ended up getting to a point where I said, okay, I said, you're going to, I said, what I'm seeing here is there's no communication. I said, so you're going to need to have, have this discussion with her. Like, let, let's talk. He was like, but she won't even let me. I said, okay, then, then you're going to need to decide, is this what you want? Right? Is this what you want? Because this is not who you are. So she le he left, she left your house. Had you checked on her? Well, no, I didn't check. I said, but that's not the kind of person you are. Right. Don't, don't start to act out who you're not right. to prove anything. That's what, so that's not an attitude and a behavior you want to carry into a marriage if you're going to get to a marriage. That's right. Thank you. you know, so Ma that, mommy, that, tell him, mommy. Yeah. Tell him, tell him. Tell so him. That's, that's what God had to tell me. Yes, yes. Okay, so he, he did this and you're doing that. Is that who you are? Is that who you are? You know, if, can we just uh, really, because we're talking about turning a difficult marriage around to a flourishing one. And I just want to highlight a couple of the things that you said, because we haven't given bullet points. So I want to bullet point it just a little bit as we move forward. But that first piece was kind of taking that level of ownership and looking at yourself and then doing your own inner work, right? And yes. you ask key questions, your four questions, right? Who you are, whose you are, how what you are and why why you are mm -hmm. asking those key questions right which are really really important and then now this we're kind of deep diving into that what you are and i really wanted to um, put a like a what do you call it highlight let's highlight this a little bit because i think that we're living in a time that there are a lot of teachers who are teaching and coaching not necessarily or coaching to it gurus who are guruing from a place of bitterness mm. there are a lot of people who are, are speaking out of their bitterness they're teaching out of their bitterness make sure we catch that question that uh, yeah. coach laura asked there just make sure we we, we don't forget yeah. that that's a great question yes mm -hmm. it is so we want to I, I wanted to sort of highlight what you said here because i think that we are being taught that being loving is weakness mm. being loving now there's a difference between being loving and being codependent and and being a doormat we're not talking about that but being loving like you're a loving person you're a nurturing person you're a person who shows affection who's caring that's who you are that's a gift not some people don't even know how to love that's true right and so if you are loving you're not loving necessarily because the person is deserving or not deserving you're loving because you are a loving person and if you're a woman of faith you're loving because you come from a loving god i'm gonna do like my father my father loves me no matter what so i'm gonna love now you set boundaries Absolutely. which is what separates talking about you were reclaiming the truth of who you are as a loving daughter of faith 
right? So I just wanted to kind of highlight what you were saying because I thought it was so powerful. And even if that's, because if you're trying to turn it around, you know that scripture that says, how, how do you know that you will not win him by your demeanor? I'm paraphrasing here. Yes. But the demeanor, not the demeanor of performing like I'm good, but the demeanor of truly being loving, because I truly believe love is the most transformative force on earth. And so I love what you're sharing about your story. And um, I want to take a look at Laura's question as we go next, right? Laura said, how did your spiritual life experience of focusing on you also change your husband? That's did the question. Did he also do personal and inner work? He did. Um, maybe not to the degree that I did mine, but he did because he saw the changes in me. So now, now I'm not reacting like... I used to, and you know, the bait, I wasn't taking the bait anymore, yes. right? I wasn't, I, I, you know, when he would, the man himself actually, <laughs> we would, you know, we, we would do this thing where, you know, we have a quarrel and we would go days without talking, mm -hmm. days. Just walk past each other, days, you know? And we were cool with that. What kind of nonsense, right? Uh, the things but when I, started to do my, when I started to do my work, I got to a place where I would still, I would say good morning. I would say good morning, and not out of a good morning, but a real, you know, good morning. I, I really cared that his morning was good. And one day I heard him telling a friend of his, like, you know, I don't know what this is, but I mean, I even had to tell myself, ah, are you crazy? Like, you, why are you acting like just so, a demon? The woman is saying good morning and you're still not responding, you know? So my change made him realize that, ah, is it that serious? You know, and he began to make the changes that he needed to make. That's right. That made sense. That's the influence yeah. that we can have on our husbands. Very real. Without sitting there, raising our, you know, pointing our finger, you need to do. That's what, he's a grown man. Yeah. You can't tell him to do nothing that he's not willing to do. That's right. So, but when he starts to see, he started to see the peace in me because I started with the love, right? I, I, once I done the faith and, and really, you know, just really found out, okay, God, what is this? I had to now pour the love back into me because I, because it had been poured out of me for this. I had to learn how to love myself, and by, by loving myself was where I started to figure out what the boundaries were, what I was going to accept, what I was not going to accept, what I was no longer going to do, what I was going to do more of, what I was going to do less of. You know, I had to have the clarity. What are you going to do differently now? Right. Because if you can't, we, you know, if it's going to be status quo, you might as well pack your bags now. What are you going to do differently? Yes. Right? It was in that place that I now was able to take ownership of, okay, yeah. So these things that I used to do, I can't do those anymore. Yeah. Because that's not right. It doesn't honor God. It doesn't even honor me. This is not who I am. Yeah. Right? That was the ownership. And I, I, I allow myself to uniquely become me again. Mm -hmm. What what made what what about me is unique to me that makes me me? Mm -hmm. Without the performance anymore. That's right. So because there was performance. It was, it was, you know, there was a lot of performance. Nikki, stop performing and be who you are, who you've been created to be. When I was able to stand up for, well, no, I'm not going to do that and this is why. Or, mm, I, you know what, I, that's not part of, of what I want to do right now. You know, just being able to step, speak my for, with my voice, yes, yes. whether you heard me or not was not my concern at that point, mm -hmm. but at least vocalizing, yeah. yes. you know, not just enabling anymore. That's because right. There was a lot of enabling going on. A lot of codependence from so many codependency. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of it going on. So I had to get right and straight and go, okay, no, no, no. There's no more enabling. That's right. What is right is right. What is not right is not right. And this is where I stand with that. Right. And That's read. Right. So all of these things to your question, um, right. Laura, began to have an effect on him as well. 
because I, well, I I refuse to now go to every single um in take a, take the invitation to every quarrel that he came up with. I I just right. like this right here has nothing to do with me. So, so when you know what this is and you understand, come back to me with clarity on what that is, and then we can maybe talk yes. through. Yeah, I I love that. I want something practical as well around that because what you're describing is so powerful it's like i i the metaphor i use right is like you as a wife initially when you're complaining complaining you act like a thermometer mm. you just keep reporting how warm it is in the house it's terrible it's so bad da, 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 da. but then when you reclaim your power you become a thermostat yeah. and change the temperature you change the atmosphere and if he is amenable and he if he has the capacity the willingness the readiness to grow then that change in temperature change in atmosphere is going to awaken a part of him and he will be inspired to grow and and so he's seeing you like ah, i have to do better if he is hardened and because the, the scripture talks about you know when a sin has become full grown and when, when some things have hardened entrenched people become entrenched then sometimes that person not going to change absolutely right? but but you still have become a thermostat so you know how to control your environment i want to ask something about this because i know that you're a woman of faith i mean you've talked about god you know how much for me, there was a season, and I wrote a book that came out of it, Despair to Destiny, yeah. that when I was going through my wilderness, one of the things I did was turn to the Bible. I said, I know that there are people who have been through adversity. So I read like Joseph. I read, I became a student. I wanted to read about every person who went through adversity. I did my own personal Bible study yes. about adversity. I said, there are people in the Bible who have turned adversity to advantage. I'm Muslim. <laughs> and I literally did that. And so the book that came out of it, Despair to Destiny, was a Bible study I had done for myself. I yes. know you've done similar things. Do you want to share a little bit about that? And, and I know that you have some things coming up around that. That's right. Um, well, one of the things, of course, was I started to journal. I really started to journal and write down how I was feeling, what my thoughts were. And what's funny is some of those journals are things that I'm able to go back to when I'm coaching my clients right now. When they talk about something, I say, hold on, let me bring up, bring up my journal quick. And I'll see what you just talked about. I, I, already went I, was, there. I was there. This this is it right here. I was there. And it gives some hope. Like, okay, if, if she was there and here she is now, then there, there, there's hope, right? Um, so journaling allows me to go back and see how far I've come and see how far we've come and really give God the glory. Like, wow, God, you can, you can turn things around, right? But secondly, like you just said, I went in search of women in the Bible that, that made it through against all odds. Like, what did they do differently? How, how I mean, how did they make it through? Because nothing new under the sun, right? Right. So someone must have gone through what I'm going through. And it, it was so, so interesting to read stories of the women in the Bible and their, their adversities and how they maneuvered it. And because of that, actually, I'm, you know, I'm going to have a Bible study, a women, women in the Bible, Bible study series to just share and glean from the things that they, that they went through and see what we can pull out of that, that we can apply to our lives. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you want to share um, some of the some of the women like that you're going to be studying? So these are women, women, the women, women for one difficult marriages, right? Women. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, who did you say? I missed that. The Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman. Now, break it down. Come on, give now, us a look. Shunammite woman. It wasn't said that she had a difficult marriage, but the woman didn't have any children. Let's let, let, let's step back. Really, really, you don't have any children. And life just keeps on. We know. We know that it's hard, yeah. especially with the woman feeling that she's being labeled as being barren. Yeah. We know because it, it's never the man's fault. 
ever, ever. So is a woman, right? And more than likely, he had other children. We don't necessarily yeah, we just don't hear about it, right? Sure. Yeah. It was not uncommon for him to, for, he may have had more wives. Yeah. He had had, it was never mentioned. Yeah, it wasn't mentioned. But, but she, even with that, one of the things was she actually first and foremost brushed that under the rug yeah. as if it wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. She enabled, right? She just brushed, okay, well, and kept on going. And when it was offered her, she's like, oh, no, there's no way. No, 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 no. What? No, don't lie to me. Don't deceive me. But when, when she needed her husband to cooperate with her, even in her, you, 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 there's no way you can't tell me that she had irritation in her. She, she looked at him like, okay, if you, how is it that you can't, I, you can't get me pregnant? How, you know, she must have had her conversations with God. She, she went through some things. There's no doubt about it. But she was able to still talk to her husband from a place of honor and respect when she needed him to, when she needed to communicate with him and uh, get, to, get him to see her side of what she needed to do with the prophet, with Elisha, right? And because of that, she, she, you know, she was able to do what she did. She had the child. But then when, the, when there was a problem and the child died, she was also not this so-called submissive wife that we, 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 they keep throwing around. She used her intuition. Come on. She, she had clarity. She about. had a plan and she went for what she knew to do. That's right. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't go into discussion with him. Did not involve him at all. It's at all. all. Right. It's all right. Like, what is going on? He's like, peace. Right. Shalom. It's all good. Don't worry. Because she knew. Yeah, that's a good example, right? Because sometimes, because the Shunammite woman, when I look at her, I think that's a fantastic Bible study. I'm mm -hmm. not the sign up now. I'm not a, well, I'm a wife. I'm an unmarried wife. Yes, you are. Oh, right? Because <laughs> what is interesting when I think about the Shunammite woman is she was a powerful woman. And I suspect that she was, because she's the one that went to petition the king later on. He didn't go to petition the king. She that, that, well, I love that you said that because she was a powerful woman because she was so powerful to the point that they didn't even mention her name. She's just the Shunammite woman. The woman the yeah. mm -hmm. Imagine that. Can you imagine her, her, also her demeanor, her, I mean, yeah. and then when, when, when Anisha was like, who do you need me to petition? Do you need me to petition the king? She's like, no, I'm among my people. I'm my good. Peace my, I mean, I mean amazing. I, you know, it's interesting. I just thought about that now because for you to be able to describe a woman as the Shunammite woman, it means that there's probably not so many women in Shunam, Shunam that were like her. Absolutely. So she was exceptional. Absolutely true. Yep. Yeah, that, that caught my attention. Like, yeah. Ooh, how many of us can someone walk into our town and just say, yeah, yeah that's the, yeah. And they know the, like, so immediately who they're, who they're talking about. Come like, on, she was iconic. Yes, she was. It was like, she was. I love that. So the Shunammite woman, and I love that you mentioned because we don't really talk about it. That there are times in the Bible where you see women take the lead, and it's an important conversation to have, right? Yeah. It's a question that this, yeah, this is a great but, question. Uh, How do you prevent emotional, physical abandonment from happening if you if you notice that your husband is no longer as patient and loving as he used to be? during the early years of your marriage. So before you answer that question, I wanted like, because I do want you to, like I want, because of time. Like, oh my gosh. Question, yeah, <laughs> I want to really make sure that people understand what's happening, how they can key in, right? Because, and you can answer the question as you go through it. But the study, the reason why I wanted you to bring up what you're doing, right? And so people, because they're coming to a live, having this conversation is great conversation. But you want to get real, you want to get tools. You Absolutely. want to, in particular, if you're a person of faith, you want to get illumination and insight. Yeah. You know, the scripture says, seek me, you'll find me, ask me, and I'll tell you great and mighty things that you cannot know. Mm -hmm. And so I know that you're doing a Bible study prayer season, right? I don't know how long you're doing it. You just talked about one of the examples, the Shunem woman. Who, are, who else are you studying? Abigail. Abigail. So mm -hmm. Abigail was married to a surly man he was yes. described, said, wicked like, wicked wicked man. right mm -hmm. so that's you know who else are you going to be talking about 
Um, those two for sure. Um, Sarah. Sarah. Because Sarah was an ex amazing, exceptional woman. That's another good one. So you're going to mm -hmm. be exploring some of these wives in the Bible. that yeah. have, even, Eve. even Eve. Challenging circumstances. And mm -hmm. I think this is going to be such a rich Bible study. And wait a minute. I want to tell you guys, I think, Nick, am I, how much, is it free? Or is it, is it? It's free, it's honey. It's free. It's free. Y'all listen to this. <laughs> it's free. free. So how do they find out about it? Because I don't, before we start going back into the conversation, what I want you to do is sign up for her free Bible study and prayer. You, and you can talk to her during these times, ask all of these questions, right? So let me pin it. Yeah. Guys, go yes. right there. Hereforwives.com slash Bible study. Yeah. And register for it before they we just, go any further. They just register it for because that way you'll get the Zoom link. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the Zoom link because it's not going to be on Instagram or, or Facebook or anything like that. So you can so have the intimate. Yes, some privacy, things that may, we need to talk about, you know. So, yes, um, I can open up the line. We can all talk yeah. as opposed to us being on. But, yes, I need us to register. That way, you know, um, I'm ready for you. Uh, it's going to be a six-week series. Okay. Um, you know, every week, every Saturday. This first one starts on Saturday, July 15th okay. at 1230 Eastern. Okay. And, um, you know, consecutively other Saturdays from then on. So we, we, we're done with the six weeks. Um, and let's have a chat. Let's really talk. Let's have some real courageous conversations about real life situations. Cause these are pe real people. These are people that lived. So if they, they were able to figure it out, then we can definitely ask our father to help us figure it out as well. And he'll show us, like you rightly said, he will show us big and, you know, great and mighty things how to he'll give us the insight so back to the question that you know asked like when you see that your husband is no longer that sweet and loving uh person that he used to be then what are some of the things that we as the wife can do to maybe ignite that again yeah what what has stopped happening in the home that maybe was happening before that made him be what he was and is no longer there oh the link is not working i don't think the link no, it works. She's saying it's not highlighting on the comments. I don't think it highlights. Oh, the comments. okay. I think I don't. I don't know if it does or not. But just go to hereforwives.com slash Bible study. Bible study, yeah. Keep going. Anyway. I'll have the rest. Just you keep going. Yes. And you can send her. Follow her. Follow her. Send her a DM. Yes. Her, please do. Send her. A DM, mm -hmm. Follow her. I'm sure the link is in your bio, and if it's it, not in your bio, it work. is. So it is. Go to her. her page, it is. The link will be mm -hmm. highlighted in the bio, yeah. so you can. And I do respond to my DMs. I love them, actually. Like, they, they're just very insightful. Um, but what are some of those things, Queen, that maybe you can start to do? You know, really get clear on, on what it is that you think is missing. Yeah. Not from emotion, not from, oh, but he, what are some of those things? And how, how will it be if you just went to him and said, babe, I remember when, or... You know, we used to do X, Y, Z. Can we do that again? It used to make me feel X, Y, and Z, right? And, and see his reaction. They're not, what I've come to find out is they're not totally crazy. <laughs> they, re they really do want what we want. They really do want to make us happy. They really do. Yeah. It's just that life happens. It could happen. And sometimes the way we come at them is just not, the it's not the best that we can that we can give them yeah and so, they react accordingly when you come accusing absolutely you don't do you that. used to do such you and such how is. you you're immediately going to say that but you used to do so yeah. and so and now now, now we're, we're at it you know but babe i remember when we used to go on sundays after church we would go have some ice cream it's been a long time that we've done that can we do that again? i mean and they, i'm not saying for no, but, no, but they perform. do they love the childlikeness within you? Oh my I, goodness. You know, they love is it. Is that even performing or is it that awakening a part of ourselves that we sometimes... It is. 
It is because you're feminine, right? That's yes, the feminine, feminine. Yes, you're which we brought down. You know, you, we all walk in, set our face as flint. Uh, he should know. He should know. Well, if he's not going to, so we we, we shut that place yeah. down. If you release that piece of you again, that feminine piece of you, and you show up. At, I mean, the other day I was playing, I was jamming music, and, I, and my husband was like, "Oh, wow!" Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it just made him, you know, glow like. Like, oh my gosh, right? You know, I walked in just now. Okay, I, I, I'm, I, and this is not too brag, but I have to say, I really have to commend my husband. Now in the mornings when I'm leaving for work, he will wait and when I'm ready, he will follow me out, take my bag to the car, make sure my car is where it, everything's good, wait for me. I, I mean, that was not my story. Yes, that, now because you were stuck. That was my, not my were, story. You were still rolling in the kitchen and in the bedroom. Why would Girl, you be Say it. <laughs> Wait, say it, right? So I'm saying this. It's not impossible. I am a living witness. Let the you yeah. that you were created to be come out. Yeah. Let it let it let it rise back to the top again. And you know, the lid we put over it, let's open that lid and let you shine again. Teacher, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Is there something? I want to say here i want to highlight something because some of you might be confused because nikki said she was married 20 something years and then she said she was married she got married when she was 30 30 something so you might be com feeling confused at the moment like wait a minute if you do the math then you realize the woman before you with shining glowing skin is in her what 50 not 50 not 51 not 52 okay so she, what she's saying also i want to talk about a, a side effect because some of us it doesn't matter how much makeup how many plastics you, know, you will look old because you're bitter and angry but this thing she's talking about allowing yourself to love and be loved allowing yourself to be soft and be vulnerable and be open and be and be in a good place and be in peace it is the anti-aging secret. Nikki, you can't just see Nikki's face just glowing by itself. <laughs> glowing by itself. I love it. <laughs> and, and a side effect. In case you want to look younger, mm. allow yourself to be joyful and playful. And then your mm. husband will be following you to the car. <laughs> or creating, creating date nights out of... Uh... <laughs> Gotta get me start blushing again. Lord have mercy. Blush but anyway. away. Blush away. <laughs> Like, oh, really? Hey, going to a wedding and he got you a room. That's we don't have enough of these stories, and I and that's why I wanted you to come on. I'm so excited for the work that you're doing because, yes, sometimes it ends in divorce, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. If both parties, if they're, de if they're no deal breakers that are like, like really damaging, which you've already yeah. talked about, yeah. And if both mm -hmm. parties are willing, and it doesn't like the, what is it that you always say? It takes two. It takes two to make a marriage work, but it starts with one. And that one is you. Because if you've been given that, if you've been given the mantle, you have to take it and run with it. You can't sit there and go, but, but what about him? That, that's not your concern right now. You've been given the awareness. You've been given the mantle. You take it and run with it and watch God just enlarge and turn things around. You will be like children again. You will be like children again. And, you know, we could talk for so long about this. I know. What you need, if you, if you want to be the one, here's what I'm going to recommend. Don't try to be the one by yourself. Mm. Find you someone like Nikki. Better still, find Nikki. Okay. <laughs> She's a failure reach out to her one of the reasons why i have her i had her on not only because she's one of my mastermind alumni or she's not an alum she's still in she re renews in the mastermind right and one of my purpose is to help women birth into their purpose and so i'm so excited to see you doing this work because this is your calling mm -hmm. support wives through this process to help wives who are in crisis 
because she yeah. started out the story saying they were roommates. I want you to make sure you caught that. They were sleeping in separate bedrooms. They were like ships passing in the night. Yeah. She's not cooking for him. She's not doing this. She's not, you know, like, like it, it, it out. shut down. Mm -hmm. None now, of that. The, now things have turned around so much. She's blushing. She's younger. She's striving. He's following her to the car in the morning, giving her, my, my babe is going to work. Let me make sure. This is after 20 something years of marriage, right? You guys are what, practically empty nesters now. Yes. Practically. So yeah. you're going to enter second honeymoon phase. Amen right? to that. I can't wait. Mm. Look at we'll sit there and look at each other some evenings and go, this is our life. And I'm like, yes, baby, it is our life. Come what on. You gonna do? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I love that. This is authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about you ha can live a beautiful life. Yeah. You should live a beautiful life. And if you choose to stay, don't stay and endure. Don't stay and suffer. Mm -hmm. There's no, no one's going to give you a trophy. Like, oh, nope. suffer through. And don't, don't be one of those mother-in-laws that you suffer through and then make your, your children's husbands and wives suffer because you're so bitter. No, do the work. Get you a wife coach. Get you these wife coach become a wife that thrives and the first step is to join her free bible study yes, okay? yes. and then tell your friends share it widely. Yes. share it widely well, it's free. you know you're not the only one going through you know there's we can learn something from somebody so let's let's do this let's really that that's what god has given us he's given us that book for a reason he did not leave us without um What's that word, you know, uh, without a resource, without something that always can lead us back to him. So let's use that to our, to our benefit, right? right? The Holy Spirit. Uh, and, yes. Yes. And, and feel his love, you know, feel his love again and feel him enveloping us. And, you know, and, and when he sees that you're wanting to do the right thing, guess what he always does? He shows up massively massively so the questions about how do you even ignite the that romance uh, romantic side of him again you will start to get the downloads from the holy spirit oh why don't you try this oh what about that oh cook him this thing oh you know send him a send him a quick text i mean girl i can't show you my text but you know, you know I, I there's a, an, a template for that also even in the scripture with um esther yes because esther said it had been a long time before the king had called her so yes. things had dried up in that sense. Like he wasn't calling her. Mm -hmm. he because he was getting her. it all over. He had yeah. all of the people mm -hmm. in his mm -hmm. He had to go through her process. Her praying, her fasting, putting on her Ro royal robes. And her robe. You might have to approach the throne room in your royal robes. Now, now, Coach Nikki is going to help you understand what that means. I'm going to step back. But <laughs> she, <laughs> you might have to do that. This is why I am so excited about the work that you're doing in this Bible study. And I'm, I just want to say this publicly, how proud I am of you. Thank you. Because you are already a successful executive in your career. You run a business, right? So those of you that don't, that don't know, she runs Shop Velvet Queen, where she has shapewear that looks like lingerie. So she knows a lot about these royal robe business, right? Oh, she has a successful business. You are, you're, you raised your children, you raised them doing well. You are in your marriage, your marriage is doing well. And you didn't really have to do anything else. You could have just been okay. But you answered the call. You answered the call. And for me, I work with women who are willing to answer the call, who are willing to say, I want to rise from success because you were already successful when I met you right. into divine significance. What is God asking me to do? Yeah. And so I want to say how proud I am of you. Well done. It's not an easy thing to step into this work. Mm -hmm. It may look easy, but it's not. And especially the work that you're doing because it is, it's heart work. It's soul work. Mm -hmm. And so I just cover you. I pray for you. I, we honor the work that you're doing and we're asking the Holy Spirit to continue to empower you and continue to bless you. And this particular Bible study, as you go forth to do it, may he speak through you and to you. And as you have refreshed others, 
May you yourself be refreshed. May you enjoy the fruit of your labor in so many ways. And not only will you enjoy it, your children's children will enjoy it because you've said you're going to pour into marriages. Their mm. marriages are blessed in the name of Jesus. Mm. I thank you for what you're doing in her life. And I thank you for what you're doing through her and all the women and men who choose to answer your call. Thank you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. I, I didn't mm. go into prayer. Well, that sometimes. was needed. <laughs> that was needed. That was that was the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That, oh, that did it right here. We gotta go. We gotta go. Thank you, Queens. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having me, Queen. Uh, my 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 iconic coach. I don't know about the other people, but my <laughs> iconic coach. <laughs> uh, uh, thank, thank you. You, thank you, you. guys go sign up. Don't, no excuses. Go If you're not following her, follow her ASAP. Tell someone to follow her because she has been open and authentic with you. Very few people are doing that right now. She's worthy of your follow, worthy of the sharing the information. And make sure you do follow. Study. Yes? Yes. I can't wait to see you all in the Bible study. Bye, Queen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>